everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our show is brought to you by the U.S. Army Warrior Fitness Team, which provides awareness of Army opportunities while serving. Team members are active duty soldiers that compete in CrossFit and Strongman Strong Woman competition, both nationally and internationally. Make sure to click our link to learn more in the description. On today's episode, I have Brian Friend giving us a first look at the roster of athletes competing at the Rogue Invitational. Uh, Brian, it's quite interesting because the men's and women's field, they're drastically different. All 15 men athletes from the games, they accepted their invitation, but not so much on the women's side. What's going on here? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's great. You know, the Rogue decided to invite the top 15 from the games this year, and all 15 of those men uh, will be making the trip. Some of them from quite far away in the case of you know some of the European athletes and Ricky Garrard, for example. Um, and Obviously, the men's competition at the Games this year was incredibly exciting. It's the closest and most contentious podium race we've had in a while. And there were a lot of guys in this top 15, like BKG, Yona Koski, and Pat Vellner, for example, who certainly didn't have the Games finish that they would have wanted and will be looking for a bit of redemption at Rogue. But <laughs> the landscape is not <laughs> so so solid for the for the women's field as it is for the men. Scroll, and I think that's scroll, where we'll have, to, uh, yeah, we'll have to investigate a little here. So if you... Go, do go to the Rogue website, as we have up on the screen, and look around. You're going to see some pretty notable names absent from this list. And obviously, at the top of that list is Tia Claire Toomey. Um, this is probably not that surprising, given the fact that she's competing at the Down Under CrossFit Championships in Australia a couple mm -hmm. of weeks later. There's obviously this big question mark about, is, will she ever compete as an individual in the sport again? But she's the only person on the women's side who's ever won the Rogue Invitational. So the fact that she's not there means there's this huge vacancy at the top of the podium. And that also comes with a big prize purse. And that's what makes it a little bit suspicious or questionable about some of the other athletes that are missing from the list. Of the 15 invited from the games, the ones who declined are Mallory O'Brien, who was second place at the games, Brooke mm -hmm. Wells, who is fifth. That makes a little sense because she's most likely also going to uh, just be in Australia with Tia. And she's obviously chosen to do that instead. Haley Adams, who was ninth, and Christy Armo O'Connell, who was 13th. So, you know, um, four or five, or five big names on the women's side that won't be in the rogue field this year. So why do you think that these athletes would decide to opt out of rogue, especially when it is the biggest prize purse of any off-season competition? Yeah, and in, and in the case of rogue, it's more than the prize purse. It's the travel stipend that they're offered. It's the right. minimum prize purse that they're guaranteed that's better than anywhere else you can compete. So... Saying no to an invitation like this definitely raises some eyebrows. And like we said, for Tia and Brooke, we could potentially see it because they have another competition that obviously proven in general is going to have a big presence at there. Um, but there are other proven athletes uh, like Saxon Panchik that are doing this competition. So when you, when you start looking elsewhere, uh, you know, Mal, Haley, and Christy, the, you know, the things that come to my mind are – like they probably have a re a good reason for not doing it. It's either maybe they're not at a hundred percent and they don't mm -hmm. feel like going into such a demanding competition right now based on an injury or just how their body's feeling overall. Maybe they have another obligation with the family or something like that. Um, it just seems kind of weird that they would just choose to forego this altogether. The one caveat I'll say to that is for Mal O'Brien. And I think that there is a possibility in her case that, um, working with Fraser and the way that they're working together, that they have a big picture plan here and they might realize that there is an opportunity to win the games next year, but it's going to take a full commitment starting probably a month ago to start doing that. And that may include bypassing all the offset season competitions mm. this year. It's not something that they've communicated. In fact, she's been very quiet and really hasn't said much of anything this off season, but it's something that, wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if that was the direction that they were going and valuing a full year of a training cycle with as minimal interruptions as possible in an attempt to get her. I mean, the only place she can go from second place this year is up to first, but that's a big task to accomplish. And if Tia does leave, there are going to be a lot of other women who feel like they have just as good a chance to take that crown. And maybe they just want to set her up the best that they can for that opportunity if it, if it presents itself. Well, and it, it is hard to believe that, somebody like Matt Frazier doesn't have a big picture goal in mind. And there is an intentional reason why to not have Mal do the rogue invitational. But now that that first place 
podium spots on the line. Like, let me pull up the roster again. Like, who are some names that you're thinking could could take the crown? Because this this would be the first time in ever. Yeah, yeah, Tia's the only one who's ever won it. She won it uh, all three years. Um, obviously, you know, last year Annie uh, got second, and uh, mm-hmm. and Gabby was third. Laura was fourth. So the next three women that were behind her at the Rogue Invitational last year are in this field and are certainly candidates to win that. You just, even though Mal was eighth at Rogue last year, I mean, look at the improvement she made from seventh to second at the games. And you look at the names ahead of her. Carrie Pierce is not competing. Kristen Holt is not competing. Haley Adams is out and Tia Claire Toomey is out. So she suddenly would have been fourth amongst that field behind the women I already listed. And she also happens to have beaten two of them at the games this year. Annie obviously competing on a team. So you have to think that this is as good of an opportunity as any of any of these athletes for male to potentially win over $215,000 at this event. There just then aren't that many competitions that offer a prize purse like that which even if you do have a big picture plan or goal in mind, that's a lot of opportunity to turn down. Do you think that athletes, because of like the earning potential, should prioritize this as an off-season competition? It's tough to say not being involved in those conversations that they're having, but in a vacuum, yes, I think that this is something that you would want to do. And I, you know, I remember, um, talking to Jason Hopper last year and he had all these opportunities to compete at all these events. And, you know, you can't do all of them, but rogue feels like the one that if you have the chance to do it, unless you have, you know, a a very important family commitment or an injury that it probably is worth trying to arrange a way to get there. Because as we've uh, also talked about in the past, it's earlier in the season than Dubai or the off season than Dubai and Wadapalooza are. So, you know, you could gear up for this, do it, and still have a pretty significant amount of time before the game season officially begins. So, yeah, I would say that, you know, barring unusual circumstances, this is pretty, you know, surprising that uh, this many women are uh, are foregoing the opportunity to compete at Rogue this year. Okay, so knowing that the men's uh, roster looks full, it has all 20 athletes, the women has 19 weird Mm -hmm. number don't love that like (laughs) do we think that they're gonna give another opportunity to an athlete to give us that whole 20 uh 20 person field for the women it's not um it's not a guarantee in the past we've seen a men's field uh, of 19 athletes compete in in person and we've also seen the year that they were forced to do their competition online where Mm -hmm. both the fields for men and women were only 18 athletes. So they have started their competitions before without a full field. Uh, it does, you know, it feels like there's still a significant amount of time, six, seven weeks until that competition actually begins. And I feel like there's a lot of athletes would, that would be happy to accept that invite. <laughs> and, a bit. and there's this caveat out there that they did announce when they had their qualifier that they would guarantee a minimum of five spots and they mm-hmm. could potentially backfill beyond that, which they've already done. Matilda Garns, who finished sixth in the qualifier, um, already received what appears to be a backfield through the through that qualifier. However, they didn't say that they invited her necessarily. Through, well, they did say that. They did post that. I was suspicious of this because she finished also inside the top 20 at the games, and mm-hmm. they started backfilling some places there. They invited Lucy Campbell, who was 16th. She was unable to come. They invited Danny Spiegel, who was 17th and was able to come. So I wasn't sure if they would give Matilda Garn's invite through the qualifier or the uh, – game spot if they were going down yeah. that route they announced on their instagram i uh, that that it was through the qualifier and there are six women coming through there now if they go to a seventh spot that would be uh south african dina swift and this would obviously be a mm-hmm. tremendous opportunity for her okay brian so what's your bottom line with what we have in front of us so far uh bottom line is that the rogue invitational is going to be incredible as it always is but that looks very different for the men and the women there's a vacuum at the top for the women in this field. And whether we see Tia ever compete as an individual or not, again, she's not going to be here. Second place from the games isn't going to be there. Four of the top 10 are missing. And this is a great opportunity for a lot of women to not just not, not just earn some money, but make a big name for themselves, win some events, and uh, in, you know increase their popularity and notoriety in the sport. The men's side is as stacked as it could be. 15 of the top 15 and a bunch of the guys who came through the qualifier are very legit, including Chandler Smith, who's had you know multiple top ten finishes at Rogue before. Uh, Twelve of the thirteen of the top thirteen from last year's Rogue Invitational are back this year for the men, 
And like I said earlier, there's definitely some men in this field that are not happy with how the games went. And we'll be looking to do something about that this time around. So I think that fans online or, or at the, who have a chance to go to the competition have a lot to look forward to with both the men's and the women's fields that uh, rogue has finally put out for us to start thinking about. Yep. Any way you slice the pie, it's going to be interesting.